Hi, my name is Luis Arenas, and this is my presentation on Paul Levy is taking charge of the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. It's a case analysis presentation. So first I'll begin um, by giving you an overview, an overview of um, what I'll be presenting. Um, first I'll start off with the background of the BADMC and Paul Levy. Um, I'll be discussing who Paul Levy was and um, the BADMC. Um, how it formed and where it, um, how it became what, what it was when he arrived. Um, then I'll be talking about some of the earlier problems that Paul Levy was facing as he arrived at the hospital and what he did to really just try to turn those things around. Um, then I'll be talking about the changing, um, changing the, the nature of the organization, how Paul Levy's decisions really um, created a situation where um, the organization started changing its structural and cultural um, way of doing things. Um, next, I'll be talking of, uh, um, about his taking lead, his really his taking lead of the organization um, as the chief executive, as a leader, um, some of the key decisions, um, some difficult decisions that were made, um, but it'll just highlight a lot of the important decisions that he made and his showing his show of leadership. Um, I'll be concluding by discussing some of the lessons learned from his experiences, what we can take back, and some do's and don'ts, how uh, managers can really apply some of these principles um, in their organizations today. So uh, a background on Paul Levy and the BIDMC. The BIDMC, um, as an institution, it was failing. It was failing for different reasons, but um, there was a lack of leadership a lot of financial troubles that the hospital was going through when Paul Levy arrived. But it really started from the merging of the Beth Israel and the Deaconess Hospital. Um, the Beth Israel and the Deaconess Hospital, they were both really well known and really good hospitals in the Boston area. The Beth Israel um, was originally started as a, a Jewish hospital to help the Jewish community um, and the Deaconess Hospital was a Methodist hospital. Both really good hospitals with long-standing traditions um, in this part of the country. And so, but they were going through um, similar situations. Their financial health was deteriorating. So after several discussions, they decided, you know, a merger is probably a good thing that we should do. And they decided to merge both hospitals, creating the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. Paul Levy, on the other hand, um, was really a fixer a fixture of troubled organizations. Um, he had been known to work at organizations that were failing and um, really liked to turn things around, to change things and make them, put them on the right track. Um, that was something that he was known for and what he really, really enjoyed doing. Um, that's one of the reasons he came on to the BIDMC. So he showed a lot of strength in leadership, in his leadership style and how he got things done. Immediately um, prior to his taking over the BIDMC as CEO, um, Paul Levy was um, the executive dean of the Harvard Medical School. Um, as executive dean in this role, he worked, um, he was really the liaison between the Harvard Medical School and the um, um, teaching hospitals that were affiliated with the Harvard Medical School. Um, so he had he knew very well the, what the BIDMC was and what it was facing as he as he joined um, the the position of CEO when um, uh, when when he joined his position as CEO. So some of the earlier problems that um, the hospital was facing when Paul Levy arrived, um, the most obvious problems really were the financial problems. BIDMC um, his arrival was in serious serious debt. They were facing um, a lot of financial losses. Um, they were $52 million. Um, they had lost $52 million in the previous year before he arrived. They had been using the endowment fund for operating costs. Um, the, the endowment had really shrunk over the last few years. Um, and the care group organization, the care group was the parent company of BIDMC. They had actually considered selling the hospital. Um, and this was a serious situation because if they had sold the hospital, they would have um, possibly moved from a nonprofit status to a for-profit status. 
And this was a very serious situation because it could have really jeopardized the BADMC's relationship with Harvard Medical School. Another problem that Paul Levy was facing when he arrived at the BADMC was that there was a lack of direction, a lack of direction in different areas, uh, but primarily with the board of directors. They had not set some clear objectives for the hospital. They didn't know where they wanted the hospital to go, and um, they were not on the same page. The staff, the board, um, of course they probably knew that they wanted to fix things, but never um, a, a, a way to get there, no roadmap to get there. Um, there was a similar feel with the care group board. Um, the care group boards, um, the parent company's board, they had um, really decided that the best situation would be to sell the hospital. And that's what they were wanting to do. That's what they planned on doing. So they had actually um, hired an outside uh, consulting group um, to really look at the hospital, prepare a report, and but look at the hospital, look at its financial situation, its organizational structure, um, what it was doing well, what it wasn't doing well, to kind of give it an overview, uh, to get an overview of the strengths and weaknesses of the hospital and its recommendations for turning the hospital around. And that's um, that report would later be known as the Hunter Report, um, which I'll be discussing in a little bit. Um, but some of those recommendations were an, in the Hunter Report. And this came through the board, uh, the care groups and the board of directors' decision to sell the hospital. Um, there was also a lack of understanding on who or what was the real threat. For example, if they had sold the hospital, the hospital would have changed from a non-profit to a for-profit. And had they done this, um, Harvard Medical School would have um, distanced themselves um, and would no longer have been affiliated with the hospital as a teaching, as a teaching hospital affiliated with Harvard Medical School. Other um, problems were implementation issues. And a lot of these really stemmed from the original Beth Israel and Deaconess merger. They did not do an efficient job um, merging the two hospitals, plain and simple. Um, the merged hospital from the beginning um, was, um, um, there was a lot of staff that were on uh, the BIDMC that were from the original Beth Israel Hospital, and there were less Deaconess staff on board. And this created a hostility from the beginning. They did not focus on cost cutting, unlike many other mergers. Um, a lot of the mergers that went on during that time, and even um, really now, um, when the two organizations merge, their focus really is on cutting the costs of it. And they had really focused a lot on the clinical side of things, which was a very good thing, but they lacked um, the cost cutting financial situations. They, so there was a lack of understanding on the process of implementation. They really had no direction in how to implement this merger successfully. And so they did not implement business side of the house. They, it's financial situations, financial health, it's organizational structure, um, it's leadership development was not properly implemented when um, the merger occurred. Some other early problems, um, and this is a, a serious situation, a big situation was that there had a lot of communication issues. The staff did not communicate efficiently with one another. From the top to the bottom, there was a lack of clear communication and honest communication, um, which leads to um, there being a real lack of transparency at the hospital. Um, the staff were left in the dark regarding the future of the hospital. Many staff talked to doctors, nurses. They were not all aware of the financial situation that was going on at the hospital. And a lot of this was because hospital administration had purposely not told them what was going on. Um, so they were just left in the dark. There was also a lack of communication between the board of directors and the CEO. They were never on the same page and this created a problem because they did not know they, where they wanted to go. Um, if one had an opinion, the other had a contrary opinion. Um, it was um, obviously a clear lack of communication. And staff was also not fully aware of the impact of the potential sale. Um, an example, obviously, would be you know losing Harvard 
affiliation. A lot of the, uh, the doctors who were working there, because the BIDMC is a teaching institution, teaching hospital, um, they're considered Harvard professors. And um, these physicians were not aware that this could happen and they could lose um, that title of Harvard professor. So changing of the organization. So when Paul Levy arrived, um, from the beginning, he had an impact um, on the board and how they would respond. So when he arrived, he made expectations early on. He requested that the board of directors um, shrink itself. Um, when he arrived, there were approximately 42 or 43 members on the board of directors, which he considered extremely big because it was too difficult to communicate with them efficiently and for them to all be on the same page. And um, so a few months later, they had actually shrunk that. Um, another another um, condition or expectation was that he wanted to start before the release of the Hunter Report. So when he first was hired, um, the board of directors told him, why not wait till after the release of the Hunter Report so that if there's anything that you don't agree with, you can say, well, you know, I wasn't part of those discussions. I wasn't part of that um, process. Um, so he can, they can, he, they can, he can say, um, I don't want to do this because of this. But he wanted to stay on to really be part of the organization as a whole from the beginning um, of its of its new outline of recommendations um, to change the organization. So he also took initiative. Paul Levy's, um took a lot of initiative. One of the first ones was his decision to post the Hunter Report. Once it was released, he decided, I want to post this report online so that my staff and others can see this. He wanted to do this so that he can get their input to get um, their opinions on what was going on. Another um, big change was came actually from the Chiefs. Their reaction to him not including them in certain decisions. Previously, the Chiefs were included in many, many decisions that were being made at the higher level. And the Chiefs, of course, liked this, but when Paul Levy arrived, he changed that. He did not include them in many of the decisions. And, you know, he responded with them, communicated with them, and said, you know, as much as we appreciate and I appreciate your input and value your opinions, some of these decisions that will be being made from now on will not necessarily involve you at all times. Um, sometimes it would, sometimes it wouldn't, but it was up to um, his discretion. So the Chiefs clearly did not like that at all. There was also an immediate change in communication, and that was one of the biggest things that occurred. Immediate change in communication with all the staff from the top to the bottom. Staff were communicating differently, and staff were actually just communicating um, to begin with. So I'll be discussing just some of the um, some examples of him taking lead and how and some of the things that really highlighted his leadership abilities, his leadership role, um, as he took over as CEO of the hospital. So in his first day of the job, he announced the potential sale of the hospital. Now, this was something that he really wanted them to let know because he knew that they weren't all fully aware of what was going on, and a lot of people didn't even know that this was even being considered. So he announced it from the beginning. Um, once he did that, he really met with individual people and teams to discuss plans, plans for the future, plans uh, to move things forward. Uh, he was looking for information, he wanted to know what was going on, and really wanted that reassure and give them reassurance that he was there to turn things around and he was going to fix things and do the best, of he best that he could. Uh, another key decision that he made was to uh, announce job cuts publicly. Up until then there was just a lot of speculation, but one of the uh, recommendations really from the Hunter Report was that um, they would need to cut jobs um, and so instead of um, staff just going by hearsay he publicly announced that yes we are considering cutting um, jobs um, which led to him posting the hunter report once this report was released he posted it online shared it with the staff and said look here's what this is what the report is saying these are recommendations that are being made about the hospital how we can um, salvage our hospital. What do you think? Are these things true here? What can change? What has been changing? He wanted their suggestions. He wanted their feedback. Um, another thing that um, he did from that really 
showed some of uh, his leadership abilities was really looking over and, and rethinking the um, the BIDMC's place with the care group structure, with the care group organization. He looked into it and said, you know, maybe um, things aren't working the way they once used to. Maybe the structure of care group, uh, maybe we don't need to be part of that organization anymore. So that's the first thing they really started considering um, their place with care group. Um, and now his, his one of his biggest things was the recovery plan. Um, he had focused on um, creating this recovery plan, um, how he would turn the hospital around in the course of a few years. Um, however, once he, he worked on the recovery plan, he before he took it to the board for approval, he posted it online again, online, sorry, and asked his staff for endorsement. He wanted the staff, the hospital, uh, physicians, nurses, doctors, surgeons to be on the same page with him. They wanted, he wanted their endorsement before going to the board for approval because he wanted um, to be on the right track with the entire organization because he felt that this was going to take uh, the organization as a whole to move forward. And he rolled out the recovery plan. Um, once he got input from staff, once it was approved by the board, he um, rolled it out and let everybody know what the situation was going on. Another another really big um, um, situation was his taking control of the chiefs. Like I mentioned earlier, a lot of the chiefs were not happy with being left out of the organ of the some of the key executive decisions that were being made, um, and he really had to sit with them and talk to them and even. In, and, and talk to them and tell them that, you know what, we value your opinion, but things will be going different from now on. Another big um, decision and um, um, difficult decision that he had to make was the place of the chief operating officer. So he had had many problems with her um, not performing very well towards the, um, towards the beginning of his time there. Um, but really there was a situation, you know, in, when she was not really communicating with him anymore and there was a lack of communication and a situation where she wasn't following up with what he needed with what the hospital needed so he made a really um, it was really obviously a difficult situation but he had to make a decision on the place of the COO at the hospital and um, and the biggest I would say biggest um, leadership um, example that he showed was um, him taking charge um, to change in the financial situation of the hospital. So some of the lessons learned uh, from his experiences were um, transparency may hurt, but it will get the job done. It will get the job done. Um, it's good to be over communicating um, or communication. There's really no such thing as over communication when with all levels of the staff. Um, planning, um, planning for multiple goals and involving who you think is necessary setting milestones, having a plan in place with attainable goals and milestones. In Levy's case, this was a multi-year plan. Implementation. One of the key problems with the BIDMC before Levy took over was its ability to implement what they had learned, what they had planned. Um, taking initiative. Um, several instances when Levy took initiative that paid off. For example, posting the Hunter report and asking for suggestions with the, um, with the plan. Another is accountability, and this is a good lesson that we learned. Um, he, um, Levy held those responsible accountable. He didn't have a problem communicating this with them, and if necessarily, necessary, let people go if they were not performing. So a few do's and don'ts that can really apply to public managers today is, first, act firmly. Allow, those, allow others to see that you are in charge and that you have things under control. Making key decisions sometimes on the spot is necessary, um, for example, when he was first hired, he was interviewed and asked, would he lay off nurses? She showed a good um, display of leadership by thinking it through and saying, no, I will not do this because it can jeopardize the quality of the hospital. Being transparent. In the case with uh, BIDM BIDMC, um, his transparency and honesty allowed him to receive respect and feedback from the hospital community. Um, taking ownership. When he was first hired, he asked to begin before the Hunter Report's release um, contrary to the board's recommendation, so that after he could blame things on the report, he took ownership of the problem, even though it wasn't his. Um, following through, he was consistent with the board and the staff, and 
the Attorney General to his commitments. He took the recommendations very seriously and wanted their full support. And the don'ts. Um, don't stop holding leadership accountable. Um, accountability is obviously a great leadership trait. However, consistency is necessary. Um, don't be afraid to ask for input from others. Um, leadership does not mean knowing everything. It's okay to ask for input. And Paul Levy, time after time, asked for this. And don't forget to celebrate and acknowledge the accomplishments. Every little milestone is actually big. Um, for example, Levy acknowledged that when the hospital for the first time since the merger turned to profit, this was a little success, but in the end, a big celebratory occasion. So that's my presentation, and um, thank you.